Okay, uh, let's start the morning session. So it's my great honor to introduce the first speaker in the morning, Professor Jun Lee from Stanford. He will be talking about new recursive relation for gametin invariance of quantity club PL with mixed spin p fields. Uh, let's welcome. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank the organizer for inviting me here to give this talk to celebrate uh, the JDG. As I mentioned, you know, um, when I when I was an infant uh, in trying to learn mathematics, you know, it's a JDG to me is a window to the mathematical world, and it is still is. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about the the, the joint work with this group of people, Huaiyan Chang, Wei Ping Li, and uh, Melissa Liu here, and in trying to to do the originous group weighting invariance of a quintic Calabi Yao threefold. <clears throat> So the Quinty Calabi L3 fold um, seems to be the, the number one, the top on the list for the for the Calabi L3 manifold. A Calabi L3 manifold is a is a three-dimensional complex manifold um, that is projective and with canonical line bundle is trivial, meaning that it has uh, nowhere vanishing holomorphic three form, holomorphic three form. And what we like to calculate to, to evaluate is a traditional uh, algebra geometry problem is to evaluate the, the curve, the curve inside X. Um, there are many different ways to do the, the curve counting. The original way to do the curve counting is to think of C as a, a subcurve. And if we do it as a subcurve, then the first question arises is after you construct the modular space, you want to have the projective moduli space, or proper. And it turned out that um, transform the problem into thinking of a curve as a map makes the, the moduli space uh, much better in the way that uh, it is virtually a normal crossing kind of a, a object. You can do virtual cycle. And of course, you know, there, there's sub-schemes, and there's uh, this stable map, and then of course, later on, we will have this uh, sheath but we will stay with the, with the, with the curve case, <clears throat> the, the stable map case. So we, we look at the modular space. You just take all possible maps. These are holomorphic maps uh, with curve. I fix the genus of the C, and to make it compact, I allow the C to develop a, a nodal singularity, so some, some little circle can shrink to zero, but no more uh, singularity, no worse singularity than the nodal singularity. And if I do this, I allow C to vary the complex structure and with the nodal singularity, and I took all the map, and I fix the degree D, and I fix the genus, and then this become a compact, a possibly singular with, a, a, with orbifold singularity, what we call a Gromov-Witten invariance. Okay, and as I said, because, uh, because we transform into the curve and because the domain, the formation of the domain is smooth, uh, there's no obstruction, and the X is smooth, so we can actually find a virtual, virtual cycle. So this is a virtual cycle of the expected dimension, and then if X is a Calabi L3 fold, so this is particularly special for the Calabi L3 fold case is that if we do counting, and if we do counting of stable map into X, then this cycle, thinking of this that you know, the, the, the counting problem is in generic sense, in the sense of, you know, perturbation, then this actually is a zero cycle. So zero cycle meaning that it can, in, in, the, in the homology of, uh, of the modular space, it is just h lower zero. h lower zero, then you can take the degree. And integration meaning you take a degree and you get numbers, and these are the number we call gromov witten invariants. And because it comes from the virtual cycle, this is, uh, deformation invariant, you know, when you deform the complex structure of X. So in other words, if we fix, uh, you, even though I, here I just wrote a very special quintic, for, for any uh, quintic smooth, I get this number. So the challenge is that, you know, you, you, you write down this uh, generating function, you have infinite many number, I fix the genus G, and I let degree D grow, and I put it into this Q variable, and now the question is how to, how to find this, uh, this function. And, well, 
So the, the, the story are always you know, begin with the, with the string series, super string series, and that's quite a while ago, uh, 90. So Kandera and his group found a closed formula for the Gina zero case. So they have, I mean, this uh, Gina zero case, is they have a complete answer. And then two years later, BCOV, they developed the Kodaira Spencer theory, and they found that F, F1 and possibly F2, and then um, probably you know, 10 years later, they found FG for all G, well, that's the algorithm, and to get a closed formula for all G up to G51. So that's uh, from the physics. And from mathematics, uh, so that's the, that's the genus zero case is uh, shortly after the discovery of the formula by the string series. And a lot of mathematicians, you know, we try to, try to find a mathematical proof, mathematical approach. So the first step is uh, there is a localization formula di discovered by Konsevich. Uh, at the same time, he, he introduced this modular space of stable map, using the stable map to, to evaluate the, the you know, to, to define the chromophytic invariants. And that's uh, the that's integration formula. And then Gavon Tell and then Liu Liang Yao, and they actually, you know, very hard uh, technique to, to solve, to, comp uh, to prove that using this uh, integration formula to prove that F0 is N0 Q, you know, the one uh, conjecture by, by Gavon Tell. And about 10 years later, so the genus one case is solved in 2000. So first, we, uh, together with Zynga, uh, we developed uh, an integration formula similar to Konsevich that works for genus one. So we have to use the reduced one. And this one, the good part is that we, one can use the uh, C star localization to evaluate these genus one numbers. And Gatsman has also tried to use the, the relative global of return variant to develop an algorithm but that algorithm is, is kind of complicated. Um, the final solution for the, for the genus one case is done by Zynga. So he went on using the localization formula here. I didn't write it down, but use the localization formula and a lot of technique to, 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 to prove that the F1 derived by the BCOV actually is the, the, the generating function for the global footing variants. So this is genus one case. And then genus bigger than one, there's there are a lot of uh, you know there are quite a few trying, and you know Mollick and Panda Panda they they use the degeneration from the theoretical uh, approach sorry theoretical approach to this problem, and then Mollick uh, Liu and they have an explicit algorithm, but you know we still haven't got the the, the close formula yet, so that's the. <clears throat> And recently, there are two new approaches emerges to, to attack the, the chromophytic invariants, also the, the, the FGRW invariants I will mention in a few minutes. Um, one is the GLSM theory uh, done by Fan Javas and Ran, and the other is with our group. We use the mixed spin P fields. Okay. So the mixed uh, spin P field is, is originated from the Witten's idea. So, um, so Witten has uh, somehow, there's, there's a paper quite a while ago. Uh, he mentioned that there is a, is a, that basically there's a line, and there's at the infinite level, so you have the Gromov Witten invariant, and, and the minus infinite level, you have the Witten. Uh, R spin theory, so it's the FGRW theory. So minus infinite. And he basically conjectured, sort of speculated that there is a theory, you know, uh, parameterized by the whole lines. And the, the one end is the, 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 the classical theory, the gromov witten The other end is the classical FGRW. And then if you sort of, you know, you can, you can, you can understand how the theory go from one end to the other end, then there's a, there's a chance to, to, to understand both of the theory. So that's the, that's the Witten's vision. And for us, so, we, we, so this work is, is based on trying to uh, realize Witten's vision in using algebra geometry. Okay. 
So what is the witness vision, right? So it is the LG theory. Um, so in the, in the very simple case, you, you really look at the C6, which is C5. I think of it as C5 cross uh, another copy C. And I have a C star action acting on it. Um, so it has uh, five, the first five copies acted by weight one. And the last copy is acted by minus five. And this is like a Calabi Yao action because the total weight added up is zero. And here is the second line is the LG function. So this is the, I mean, you see the, the quintic polynomial, the quintic uh, Calabi Yao 3 for shows up the equation, right? So this is the equation equal to zero is the quintic in the P4. And then he inserted another polynomial P, which is the, the last one, and then the function is just the product. And seeing that you know this function actually is C star equivariant, the, 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 the this C is weighted zero when, when the C action. So so this function is, is C star invariant because the weight is is chosen such a in a special case. <coughs> and then you can just go ahead and do the uh, do the quotient. Okay, so you just do the quotient, and of course the quotient is quite bad because uh, you know at least you have zero zero the origin. Origin is when, when the C star acting on has the stabilizer which is infinite. So this is kind of adding stack uh, phenomena. But you can do GIT quotients. There are well, this is even not a, not a proper, but let's let's just say do the GIT quotient. Then we GIT quotient is delete some bad locus. And then you get a very nice and, and most with quotient singularity quotient. So, so one way of deleting the uh, all bad points is delete the origin from the C5. The other one is you deleting the origin from the C. And that's what you get. Okay, so this is the, this is the I guess the, the first thing you learn from the uh, uh, elementary course in algebra geometry. So this uh, and so you see, here we have a KP4, we have a C5 cross uh, quotient by Z5, and what, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> um, no, this, this, is, this is, I have to turn it off. Question? Yeah, yeah, no. Oh, okay, okay, no, I think it should, uh... No, I, I, I turned it off. I turned it already off. Um, no, this, this, this is a... Let me, let me, let me... No, I cannot open the file. Right, so I mentioned about these uh, two quotients. So here is what, uh, what the witness uh, says, right? So he said that if you do a field theory value in the KP4, what you get is the gromov of weighting invariance, okay? And if you do a field theory value in C5 quotient by Z5, which is the witness spin class, the, the FGRW invariance, and then there's, because these two theory, well, at least the KP4 and the C5 uh, quotient by Z5 are the two GIT quotient of a single um, Artin stack. So either you think of in algebra geometry category, you think of this as wall crossing, or you think in terms of sim uh, symplectic geometry, then there's a sort of phase transition. There's a, there's, a, a, there's a phase transition from minus infinite to all the way to infinite. So, so what he says is these two series are the two limits of our family 
of, of theory. And if we do it in algebra geometry as, I, as, as we do, so we think that um, the, we, we're going to develop uh, MSP uh, field theory. And what we want to do is that we want to use this theory to realize these wall crossings uh, envisioned by, by Witten and in algebra geometry. In algebra geometry, you know, in simple geometry, you have a family of, uh, of theory. But in algebra geometry, when we do the, the wall crossing, we basically become, uh, you know, this is a constant family. And then there's a transition. That's another constant. So that's basically a single transition between uh, from the FGRW to gromov witten invariants. OK, so let's, let's just uh, try to, try to uh, implement our slogan. The slogan is to, we want to take a field theory with value inside C5, take our origin cross C, quoting by C star. OK, so what is the field theory? So a field theory is uh, a, a bunch of fields over a Riemann surface, over an algebraic curve of, a, of some line bundles. So we, we take a C, which is a base, which is a Riemann surface, is a nodal curve, and L is a line bundle. And I have phi 1, phi 5. These are fields. These are fields. And uh, phi 1 up to phi 5 are sections of L because L is, has weight 1, right? I read the red line. So L has weight 1, so I just take the section of L. But the, the, the last copy of C has weight minus 5, so I should take the section of L minus 5. So that's what is the rule. But there is a uh, twist by gravity, which is kind of a, I mean, we understand why it is useful, because we will see, we will see that. But how it comes to in the first place, it's still a mystery. But, but once we know that, you know, we see that omega, we realize this is extremely useful. So we take omega, a root to be L twisted by minus 5 and then twist by the, the canonical line bundle. And you see the, the, the first line, the C5 has to take out the origin. So that translates to phi 1 up to phi 5 will never be 0 because you take a field inside C5 minus origin. So you take a five section, uh, five section together will never zero, but rule is arbitrary. Rule can take zero or can be identically equal to zero. And the equivalence is because the line bundle is a sort of a, you know, as a stack level. So the line bundle, you can scale the line bundle. And if you scale the line bundle, you scale the phi together by t, but then you scale the rule by t minus five, right? Because the, the, the weight. So that explains the, the quotient by C star meaning. So that's exactly is the, the, the field theory. And then we, we put in the, the stability condition, you know, it's stable if the automorphism is finite. So we're basically literally copying the, 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 the first line, take a field theory inside this uh, quotient. And we interpret the minus zero and also quotient by C star and also the weight one and minus five. The new thing is that the weight of my fi minus five you have to take the line bundle o, uh, L minus 5 twisted by the canonical line bundle. And if you, if you think about it, I mean, this is kind of a, the, the, the old things, right? If you have five sections, which is never zero, coming from a line bundle, then this five section defines you a morphism, a map from the curve to the projective space P4. Then, so C, L plus first phi, phi, give you the stable map F. And then you have an extra section rule. OK, so what we are looking at is we're looking at the modular space of stable map with a field. OK, so with a P field. Why it's called P field? Well, that's originally I mean, appear in the physics literature. And uh, the. One thing you should notice is that when rho equal to zero, when somewhere you, know, you have a stable map, you have a field, and the field is non-zero, then you can scale the field and up to, you know, the field can go to zero, and then it's a limit. But you can scale the field to the infinite, and then it does not have a limit. So this modular space is not compact, not proper. And so there's, there's a way to, to try to construct a modular space virtual cycle 
uh, Witten has this Witten's original approach to try to use the uh, Witten's equation, <coughs> which is analysis, but that works for the genus zero case. And for high genus, um, we, can, we, can, we can do use the perfect obstruction theory. Let me just be sorry, quick. We can use the perfect obstruction theory and use the cosection. And <coughs> just sort of a, well, at least this is how I feel, you know, the LG theory is such an amazing theory. I mean, uh, I mean once I notice this line, I'm a true believer, right? So this is the, you know, you look at the, the, the section. So phi i are the section of phi uh, L, right? So I take phi to the power of five. And the root dot are those exception coming from the obstruction theory. So if you fix the base and you have a line bundle and you have section vary, you know, the, the, the obstruction to the vary of the section is from the H1 of the section, of, of the line bundle. So phi dot is inside H1 of L, root dot is H1 of L minus five. And I got the second line, I got this impression. I can use the, 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 the fresh line now. Uh, and the, the second line actually is coming from, you, you just differentiate or take the variation of the, 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 the LG function I wrote to you, the root times the sum of xi squared. And whenever you see the delta rule, you replace by root dot. And then you're going to get the line, and then in the end it lies in the H1 of omega c. That's where we want to test the, the line bundle, the, the L minus five by the, the canonical line bundle, because then we get the H1 of omega. But H1 omega c is canonically equal to c. So we get this, uh, this LG function. <coughs> So, so this concession, the, the benefit of this concession is that it cured the problem in defining a group of Witten type invariance for a non-compact moduli space. Okay, so in general, uh, you often you can get a moduli space, you can get a perfect obstruction theory, you can get a cycle on it, and you want to integrate that cycle. But if the moduli space is non-compact, you will not be able to integrate a, a cycle, a, you know, a homology class in the non-compact space. What this says is that you can actually do it because the, the fact is that the cycle only lies inside the vanishing locus of this, uh, uh, this cosection. So I'm just going to very quick. Yeah. Why do you just no, I don't want you to. No, it won't. It's just the laser pointer. Are you sure? It's, it's, yeah. It, it won't. I, 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 took I, I, I took it out, professor. So oh, OK, know. OK. You scared me. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I just want to mention that in the cosection, really cure the problem. So the Witten used the Witten equation to perturb to make it compact. And here there's a single stroke, very, very easy. You just write down the concession and then the theory says that you, you get your virtual cycle in the compactly uh, supported, okay? And the, the, in particular, just read the last line. In this case, the amazing things happen. You know, we do the, we do the modular with fields, right? P4, right? I mean, the, you, you don't really see it's a, it is a, is a P4 theory. You only see the line bound. You no, don't see the quintet. The quintet only occur when you do the cosession. But once you do the cosession, the vanishing locus of cosession just picks you up the moduli space of stable map to the quintet. Q5 is a quintet. Okay. So once we see the vanishing locus, we realize you know, that it must be related to the, the quintet invariant. And, and that's, the, that's what we, we, we did with uh, with Hui Liang Chen, that you know, we used uh, uh, this is the modular with, uh, modular stable map to P4 with, with P field, right? So only thing is the field is L minus five. The five shows up there, but that five already gave us everything we want to know about the quintet. So that that seems really, you know, uh, to me, um, stable map to quintet is a very nonlinear object, right? You know, you have a, you have a it's not like P4, it's almost linear, but quintic is, is nonlinear, and you look at the map into a, a, sub, a, a variety, a curved variety. But here, if you look at the, P, uh, the, the, the modular stable map with, with, uh, stable map with P fields, these are mapped into P4 and plus another field. Map to P4 are just five sections, so I'm just dealing with six sections. Okay, so this is a completely linearized theory. Okay, so this is the KP4 theory. And LG theory for the for C5 uh, quotient by Z5 is, is similar. 
So there's this Witten's original approach, the partial Vanchoff and uh, Chilto and Ren, and they use different way, and then we can use the we can use the concession localized version to reconstruct, I mean, re, well, redefine the, the, the FGRW invariants. The, the benefit is that this put these two series in the same, under the same basket, in the same basket, okay? So we do the exactly the same thing, right? So this is, uh, you know, well, we, we put the extra marking there, but if you, if you don't go to move with invariants, the marking is a very natural thing to do. So you just forget about marking for the moment. You just have a curve, line bundle, five section plus another section, right? And uh, the curve with pointed twisted curve, and then the section are same, the, still the same space. This is still the same space. I put a log because there's a marking here. So these are same. And now we are dealing with this quotient. This quotient meaning that C5, I don't take out of the origin, but the other one, I take out the origin. So this, where is this? Yeah, phi i are arbitrary. It can be zero or can be entirely zero, but rule has to be nowhere vanishing because I take out C minus zero. And nowhere vanishing, one section of a line bound, a section of a line bound which is nowhere vanishing, forces the line model to be trivial line model and the session basically equal to one. So that one actually, in, you know, this is a section one of this line model, this gives you this isomorphism. So that's the spin, spin curve, right? L to the power of five equal to the canonical line model. So the spin curve shows up. Well, this is also, um, originally it's coming from physicists, you know, by, by looking at a quotient like this. Okay, my question like this. <clears throat> and you can, you can just do this, and then we have to do the uh, concession, local, uh, concession, we, we construct a concession of the obstruction shift, and blah, blah, and then we, in the end, we get uh, this uh, virtual, uh, we get a virtual cycle. Again, you know, the modular space is, because it has fields in it, the modular space is usually non-compact, but nevertheless, we get a proper modular, uh, we get a properly supported virtual cycle. And this is the modular space, it's a spin curve modular space, no, no fields. Here's a five P fields, there's no fields. So this is proper, this is compact. So we can, we can, we can. Okay. Um, okay, so let me not, not get into this. Okay, so, so now what we get is we, we sort of rewrite the rewritten, and these are not really new, right? I mean, the two series are already known, but we rewritten the two series uh, in the language of uh, fields uh, of cross-sections, and they are very similar. So now the question is how to find a, how, how to find a, a technique approach to connect these two series to, to realize the wall crossing, right? So here is we use the master technique, a master space technique that was first uh, seen after the, the work by, by Michael Sadis. And so what we do is we just, uh, you know, this is the space we did, right? Uh, and then we put another P1 here, then we put another group action onto it, and then we take a GIT quotient of, of, of this. Okay, we take out the, 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 the you know, we, now this way we want the GIT quotient. So we take the, the vanishing locus. So we basically add another parameter, okay, as a parameter, and then we, we try to use the, uh, C star localization to, to investigate how you change the parameter. Okay. And let me just skip this part. Okay, so, um, okay, so we're going to develop a theory which is target in the, you know, the original, we have a C5, another C, now we have to add a P1. So we just, anytime you add another copy behind, you just add fields. So I, because of P1, so P1 is just two fields, two fields uh, of a new line bundle because the line bundle allow you to arbitrary scale. That's that line bundle freedom coming from line bundle is scaling by C star makes this a uh, parameter inside, inside P1. So these are all the same. The blackout is just all the same. So the N is a new line bundle. Okay, these are the same. And then mu, mu one is L and O, right? The, o, the usually, the, uh, the P1 is O, 
L plus O, but because this is over line model, I allow to twist another N. So this is the most general form of a, of a parameter inside P1, family of P1 over, over a line over Riemann surface. And plus uh, combined GIT stability and narrow. You know, I'm just, if you don't fo focus on technical detail, we just follow the slogan, right? Anytime you have a copy, you, we just add fields. So we just add more fields to the, to the master space. And uh, now here is the interesting part. I mentioned that the master space, I have to take out this uh, extra to make it a GIT quotient, right? So these are the x, u, you know, that's vanishing. But, but then the GIT-like stability requirement that x is the phi, u1 and u1. So whenever I say that I take out both equal to zero, I require that this section never zero. You just follow, the, follow the, 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 the copy of this GIT copy and then do a field theory. Okay. So the, the second one is the same, right? Second one is the same. Yes. So N is the line bundle on C? N is the line bundle on C, yes. And does it have like some fixed degree or something? Or well, well, we will do it later. So, yeah, yeah. In, 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 when we do the modular space, then we fix degree, then we collect this object. But at this moment, yeah, when, when, anytime you, you pick a line bundle, you have objects like this. Oh, okay. So, um, so this is, uh, let me just, just do one case. So in the end, we're going to do localization, right? So, uh, wait, wait am I, so yeah, 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 I'm not sure, so I just. Oh, let, let's, let's skip this. So what we do is we fix the genus G, which is genus of the C. And we fix the monogamy because we have marking, and marking is all before, so that's all before sort of type. Let's, let's just uh, put it there. And then we, now we have two line bundles. So we have two numbers, the D0 and D infinite. Okay, so we fix the, a pair of uh, numbers. Um, may not necessarily be integer because we are in the uh, stack here, we are in the all before case. And then we know that this is a Dunning Manfold stack locally of finite type. L, no, I, L, because once you put the, the, the marking and the marking can, not, not the curve, because we're doing a combination of the, the Witten spin and the Gromov Witten. It's a combination, both curves. So the marking can be, can be orbifold, and the nodal can be orbifold. I mean, we, we require it to be representative. So, so a priori, we allow it to be. So this is a stack, this is the typical you know, uh, uh, one thing you do. And then you can add a C star action on it, you know, just scale the last, uh, last one, you know, because we want to use the C star localization to study the, uh, this one. And then, so this has a perfect obstruction theory and it has equivalent, so the, the key point is that the section, because the cross-section is only involved the, the last two, uh, this, uh, the, the, the cross-section only involved the, the previous, the phi and the rule, but the, the, the this C star action only acting on the last two fields. So the cross-section is C star equivalent, and because the cross-section is C star equivalent, it allows to use the localization, the, 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 the virtual localization, to evaluate the, 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 the virtual cycle. And then we also have a possession localized virtual cycle. It's in the where the possession is vanishing. So the cycle, cycle uh, the, the virtual cycles lie inside some proper substack. And the technical part is that this proper substack is actually, you know, this actually is, is compact. It's compact in amount for stack. So you can do integrations. And then you can play the, play the uh, 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 ordinary rule. You know, you take the virtual cycle, which has, uh, and which has uh, certain dimensions. The real dimension is, is over here. This is the real dimension, okay. <clears throat> and this is how you get the, the relation. So if it's a, it's a real dimension, 
And if this is a cycle, and if the real dimension, if the dimension is positive, I can multiply by the first churn class, you know, the generator of this uh, equivalent ring, the, the C star of the point. So this is the, the trivial line model, but with, with non-trivial weight. I can multiply by this one and do the uh, equivalent class and then push it to the, the ordinary class. Because of this occurrence, I get zero. So I get down vanishing. So this is, this, is, uh, this is typically how you get a, a relation by using the master space technique. And this is the, a cycle, and we lift it. I mean, it's already in the, in, the, in the equivalent category. And then we push it to here. Then we can use the localization formula. And if we use the localization formula, uh, you know, we get a summation over the fixed loci. Uh, equal to equal to zero. Okay, so that's the that's the that's the that's the typical typical things. And then you want to see what happens. <clears throat> so what what we want to say is that this what happens in this uh, what appears in this formula. This formula is kind of a complicated long formula. It involves all the Gromov-Witten invariants. Has Gromov-Witten invariants appeared here? It has FGRW invariants appear here with certain insertions, only, only part of the FGRW invariance, and then also the Hodge integral over the MG. Okay. And you know, we can, the first thing is you can just try to use the, uh, look at the leading coefficients and, and see if you can, you can use this to, to, to recursively recalculate. <clears throat> and the answer is yes, uh, you can, if you know the, well, if you know the previous genus G and degree D Gromov-Witten variants, okay, and you know a few of the, here is the, the big if, right? So you know a few of the, these are the, the, the FGRW invariants. If you know a few of the FGRW invariants, and then you, you can calculate the next uh, <coughs> Gromov-Witten invariants, and you see FGRW invariants only depend on G, does not depend on the, the degree. So after a while, so you can just keep on doing and calculate all the Gromov-Witten invariants recursively. Okay, so that's kind of a. Um, yeah. So if I let a d zero equal to zero, and that's uh, that's I mean, uh, sort of then. So you remember that we have two line bundles that we can play the L and N. If I let one of the line bundles has degree zero. Okay, then the vanishing uh, provided in the previous uh, slides it only involved FGRW invariants. Only involved the FGRW invariants. Um, so let me just use last five minutes to, to say a little bit about, to see how the, 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 the relations looks like. You know, right? So this is the, the relation used the uh, master space localization technique. And here, to, to understand this, we need to understand um, the f this f gamma and also the denominator. Um, so actually, so the, the, the way to, to, to line up the, 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 the fixed low side I look at, so I, I will, so this part, I have a curve, right? So basically, you know, you have a curve. You have a C, you have line bundle, you have phi, you have rho, you have new one, you have new two. So I line, I, I put this, the part of, for instance, new one is entirely equal to zero over this component. So I put this one inside new one equal to zero. This is corresponding to zero in the P1, right? I can put another curve inside, you know, new infinite equal to zero. That's, that's, the, that's the infinite case. And then there is the, you know, the middle one, that's new one equal to new two equal to one, but phi equal to rho equal to zero. And then there will be, so there will be purely P1. Right? It's like if you do the localization of a stable map go to P5, you will see several curves where mapped to the fixed point of the, 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 the edge, the, the vertices of the P5 where the points is fixed by the local. C star action, but then you also see this P1, right, going between the fixed loci. So these are the P1 going between the fixed loci, 
and then there may be this one here, and you know there may be another curve, you know, maybe another curve here. So basically, once you the, the fixed loci will consist of curve like this, maybe it's here, maybe here, here, and the the, the the contribution coming from this one is purely FJRW. This coming from this is the Hodge integral, and from here is the gromov witten invariance. Okay. And uh, so let me let me go through. So the 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 modular space, the fixed loci, actually is going to be the product of moduli of this. Let me let me just use the don't hide everything. So this one is uh, is is well is the the give the fact is that you know these are going to be object like this, and these things is giving you the gromov witten invariance. The middle one, the second factor is given by the FGRW invariance I put as 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 on top, and third factor give you the Hodge integral. Okay, so the modular space is the the product plus this factor here, and this factor is coming from this P1. So if you take the virtual cycle, so you will see the, the gromov witten invariance showing up here, here, but I mean showing up not as a linear term, but as a product. So that in the end, you get a polynomial relation. So you get a, so in, in the end, you get a polynomial relations among the gromov witten invariance and the FGRW invariance. And on the first side, it's, it's, it's quite complicated, um, but uh, you know, after a while, we, we sort of spend time on it, and there is a quite a structure of it. So first things we can we can do is you know we can we can say we have this recursive relation uh, after we know a little bit of the action uh, invariance coming from FGRW invariance, like Holomorphic anomaly equation to solve. You have to you have to have the initial condition, and recently you know, Ross and Guo Guo and Ross they use the uh, use our theory. For the genus one case to actually prove the the, the uh, to construct the the completely determine the FGRW invariance uh, in, uh, the generating functions, and and right now we are we are working uh, doing the you know the the now the job actually is purely combinatorial and we have to organize the data, and we want to I mean the hope is that you know once we organize data we will see the structure of the all genus Gromov-Witten invariance of the quintic. And it looks like you know it's it's very much similar to the to the structure of the clam and his group. So this is what I say. Thank you. Uh, any questions or? You mean FGRW invariance appear? Hmm? Are they easier to compute than the gromov witten invariance? Like, if I wanted to compute, like, genus 3. Yes, uh, there will be a few, in the, in the relation, there will be a few FGRW invariance you have to compute. But of course, you know, if, if you, you can bypass this by using some algebraic geometry, say, you know, for the genus 3 gromov witten invariance of Quintic, you know, I know the first lower degree, a few lower degree, and I can use this to, to use this relation to calculate the, the FGRW, this field. So, so this is like Clem's trick. So you, you can use algebraic geometry to, to bypass, but then may, up, to, up to a certain stage, there's really something, I mean, gromov witten invariant, you, you have to calculate, then you have to pick up the FGRW, if you cannot, you know, you left, yeah. yeah. But if you're purely from this recursive relation, yes, you, you, you will have a few of the, the FGRW. Actually, if you do genus one, you only have one FGRW invariant shows up. Um, I think the current trick is, you know, you have to do, put everything together and, and, you know, just write down everything um, as, a, as a generating function. 
But the, the, the tricky part is also you have to sum over all this uh, uh, the contribution come, come from P1. If you can calculate all the resist, you actually this, this relation give you very clean, clean answers. But get all this, uh, but the, the thing is that the, the work of you and, and the Tao, you know, your, your is doing uh, localizing on P5. But it, yeah, yes, but, uh, but we, yes, but the way, last night I say, you know, because uh, we try to do everything in algebra geometry, so, yeah. We expect the result is similar, yes. Yes, we, we hope that, you know, this also give you some kind of a, um, Inside, you know how the uh, holomorphic anomaly equation comes, but uh, you know there's, there's a lot of progress by, by other people. Uh, you know, recent work by, by Raoul on the, on the holomorphic anomaly equation, which gives us a, you know a really new energy and a new sort of a thing that encourages us to, to continue this project. But seems to be, but but it seems to be. If we can really do the genus zero and uh, you know the 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 the, the, the contribution comes on P one, then the structure well comes up, and but that's I'm very yeah. You have something add? You have something add? But because, like in your work with Yamag Yamaguchi, the, you have five generators, and these five generators are genus zero invariants, right? So yeah, so we see the similar structure here. So we will need to package the genus zero, and then uh, yeah, the structure is very similar to. We haven't, yeah, I mean, we. Um, we, at this moment, I mean, uh, our thinking is that we have to calculate, and then, you know, we have to see these things, and then we, we can we can put this, say, okay, so these are the generators. And because uh, I saw your result is, is based on the, on the VAFA, you know, the BCOV, and we try to avoid the, the, the zero BCOV. And I mean, in, in a way, uh, this is, well, I, I would say that this, is, this can speak of as, as I'm, I'm, I'm a very narrow-minded person, so I, I, just, I, I just wanted to, you know, do the complete A size theory, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you understand both sides. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? And if not, let's thank speaker again. Well.